Hello. Welcome to Mr. Tech Electronics YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a QRPCW transmitter using three transistors. The main highlight of this transmitter. This transmitter has an inbuilt antenna tuner and LED SWR indicator. This is the circuit diagram of the transmitter. This transmitter was introduced by an Indian ham radio operator VU2VWN, his name is Vesant Kumar. So the transmitter is known as VWN QRP transmitter. This transmitter can give output up to 5 watts. This transmitter operates in the frequency range of 7 MHz to 7.2 MHz in 40 meter band. This is the PCB of VWN QRP transmitter. Check this video for how to build PCB at home. And I collected all components according to the circuit diagram. Place and solder all the components to the PCB. I connected all the components to the PCB. Now I'm going to make tuning coil of this transmitter. The tuning coil one of the main part of this transmitter. For making tuning coil, I'm using 1.7 cm diameter PVC pipe and 24 gauge insulated copper wire. Drill a small hole on the PVC pipe and insert one end of the copper wire, and wind 24 turns on the PVC pipe. After winding 24 turns of the coil, remove the remaining part of the PVC pipe using hacksaw blade. Next, remove a small portion of insulation from the 13th turn and 16th turn from the coil using a form cutter blade. After removing the insulation, solder two small wires to 13th turn and 16th turn of the coil. Now the making procedure of the tuning coil is completed. These are the number of the coil legs. Place the coil on the PCB according to the number printed on the top side of the coil component footprint. Now I'm going to connect the final transistor of this transmitter. I'm using BD139 medium power RF transistor for final RF amplifier of this transmitter. Use a heat sink to the transistor to reduce overheating. This 1 kilo ohms variable resistor is used for power output level control of this transmitter. Next, we need to make RFC or radio frequency choke coil. For making the RFC coil, I'm using 100 kilo ohm, 2 watt resistor and 30 gauge copper wire, the copper wire I removed from old 12 volt step down transformer. Remove insulation from one side of the copper wire, and solder to one leg of the resistor, and wind 150 turns of coil on the surface of the 100 kilo ohm resistor.
After winding, solder the coil end to the other leg of the resistor, and place the radio frequency chalk to the transmitter PCB. After soldering, remove the excess leg part of the RFC coil using a wire cutter tool. Connect the power level control variable resistor to the PCB, using small pieces of wires. Connect a BNC socket to the antenna output pins of the transmitter. This connector helps to connect external antenna coaxial cable to the transmitter. And connect another BNC socket to the VFO or variable frequency oscillator pins of the transmitter. This socket helps to connect external RF oscillator output to the transmitter. Connect two wires for the voltage input of this transmitter. This transmitter needs 24 volts. I'm using my homemade transformer power supply. This power supply can deliver 24 volts and 12 volts. This is the inside view of the power supply. There are lots of transformer power supply circuits available on the internet. This is my homemade variable frequency oscillator. This is DDS or Direct Digital Synthesizer Variable Frequency Oscillator. This type of oscillator offers high frequency stability. The frequency range of this VFO is 0 to 50 MHz. A SI 5351 clock generator module is the main part of this VFO. An Arduino Nano is the controller of this VFO. The frequency can be adjusted by rotary encoder knob. Connect the transmitter to 24 volts output connector of the transformer power supply. And also connect 12 volt connector to DDS VFO. Connect the VFO to the transmitter using BNC connector coaxial cable. For tuning the transmitter, I'm using 12 volt 1 ampere incandescent light bulb to the output of the transmitter. This bulb acts as a dummy load. Connect knobs to the shaft of power adjustment variable resistor and tuning variable capacitor for improving fine adjustment. Switch on the power supply, you can see the dummy load filament bulb is glowing, that means the transmitter is working perfectly. Also the SWR LED is glowing, which means the power output is very low. Adjust the tuning variable capacitor knob until the dummy load bulb glows brightly. When the dummy load gets full brightness, then the SWR indicator LED will dim. For getting more power. The adjust the power control variable resistor knob, also gets the SWR indicator LED will glow, that's not critical.
Now I'm going to tune a shortwave radio near to the transmitter. In 40 meter band, the signal level indicator LED of the radio glows brightly, which means the transmitter is working perfectly. This transmitter works in the frequency range of 7 MHz to 7.2 MHz in 40 meter shortwave radio band. This frequency is allowed for ham radio operators. I'm also a ham radio operator. My call sign is Victor Uniform 3, India Zulu Delta. This is the external dipole antenna for my QRP transmitter. Check this video for how to build this antenna. For connecting an external antenna, remove the dummy load bulb from the transmitter. I'm using my homemade SWR meter for calibrating this transmitter. This SWR meter has two mechanical dials, indicating forward and reverse voltages. Also this meter has two BNC sockets for connecting transmitter and external antenna. Connect SWR meter and external antenna to the transmitter as per the video. Turn on the power supply, you can see the voltage levels of forward and reverse on the meter dial. Adjust the variable capacitor of the transmitter, until the reverse voltage dial shows minimum deflection. You can see the power output level can be adjusted by the variable resistor on the transmitter. I'm connecting a small push switch on the transmitter as per this diagram. This switch acts as a simple Morse code key. Morse code is a method used in telecommunication to encode text characters, as standardized sequences of two different signal durations, called dots and dashes, or dits and daws. Morse code is named after Samuel Morse, he was the father of Morse code. This transmitter sends Morse code messages with the help of this push switch. We can turn on and off the transmitter by pressing and releasing the switch, a short time press sends dot, and long press sends dash. I'm using WebSDR station for observing transmitting range of this transmitter. WebSDR is an online radio signal live streaming station. There are lots of WebSDR stations active around the globe. I'm using Coimbatore WebSDR station. This station is more than 300 kilometers away from my location. Type the transmitting frequency on the column shown in the display. When the push switch is pressed, a line appear in the WebSDR display, which means signal from this transmitter reached to the WebSDR station location. Now I'm going to send Morse code using this transmitter.
This is my homemade VWNQRP transceiver. I can transmit my voice through this transceiver by amplitude modulation or AM. A modulation transformer is used to make AM signal. More detailed video of this transceiver is uploading soon. Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. If you like more radio related contents, please visit my YouTube channel. If you like those videos, please subscribe my YouTube channel. Okay, see you on the next video. Till then, bye.